Let's chat interactive choice grids and a few tips to take away. We had a few questions about the choice grids we've been sharing uh, and how we make them. So this is a quick how-to with some tips. And if you're asking yourself, what is a choice grid? It really is just a digital interactive choice board acting as a provocation or invitation to learning. Really any presentation app will work for this. Uh, today we're walking you through slides, but I've also done it in Keynote. Like anything, the hardest part is probably the first step before you're even doing any of the fancy editing and that curating the best collection. Melanie and I have been using a planning doc to collect some of our curation. Just like a great museum or art gallery, I always try to think of the pieces we're selecting, but also how they're paired together and how the pairing uh, provokes and invites learners into a different discussion. So let's get started. So after we start a new slideshow, I like to change the page setup. So just a reminder that in page setup, you do have a custom option. So you can make it fit a page, um, especially if you're designing a PDF, or you can make it more square, whatever works for your choice grid. I start off by bringing in the shapes. For me, um, I've always gone with squares. I'm not really sure why, uh, but having that consistency in format just means um, when you share a collection, we only really need to teach people how to use a choice grid that first time. And love how the shapes are already built into all of our presentation tools. And I have to admit, I speed up the process a little bit by grouping and copying, um, just so it's a little faster. I love the custom color feature that's available um, just so that I can fine tune, but also in the grid so it's easier to um, get multiple versions of the same shade. So it's a really quick way to differentiate the colors but make sure they're in the same family. So I love to use images and icons to just help communicate and make it easier for learners of any age to really find uh, the provocation or invitation that works best for them. So I love to insert my own images, um, just a fun thing for me to do. I love to take pictures. Of course, you can use another tool like Unsplash. They have great images. Um, and remember, you can always bring in images from a Google search right within Google Slides as well. A great add-on that I love in Google Slides is to the Noun Project. A collection of icons for any topic. I do subscribe, um, but there are opportunities to use it for free as well. I just find it allows um, me to put kind of that visual prompt in the choice grid to just help that navigation when uh, I'm not physically there to help them out. So one little secret trick I do is I use transparent shapes. Um, to make the links a little easier. This just makes sure that people don't have to click uh, exactly on the text um, to be able to get to the link. Again, I'm a little lazy, so sometimes I'll just copy the shape before turning the line and the fill to transparent. And then once each box has its own um, cover, I then link that transparent shape to uh, whatever link I'm using. This means I can also link a sketch note um, or I could link a diagram, lots of possibilities there. The last tip is if you're not sharing it as a PDF, uh, you want a link to share it as published to web. Publishing to web works like a share. It just means it goes straight into a view. Um, so once I go to publish to web and hit publish, I get a link that I can embed or that I can share. And since it goes straight into a presentation view, it makes the clicking and interacting that much simpler. Hope those tips were helpful. If you have more questions, let us know. Happy curating.